Hey guys, welcome back to D Wood Studios. I'm David. Today I'm going to show you how I built this flag out of radiata pine lumber, and you're going to see that it's a little bit different than how most of my videos go in building flags. As you can see, I've got a piece of half inch plywood here that I've got cut down and sanded down to the size I, I want. Here's all the parts for my flag. And what I've done is oversized this piece of plywood about an inch and a half all the way around for a reveal. What I'm gonna do is use a stain to stain this plywood black and then put my flag on top of it directly and glue it down. My other parts are my flag parts, which as you can see is radiata pine, three quarter inch thick. I've put a 45 degree chamfer all the way around and sanded it to uh, 220 grit. It. I've cut this down to size except for the Union which is just a little bit bigger as far as how tall it is so that once I get everything put on here I can measure and get that exact measurement so it matches up. We're gonna get started and go ahead and get this background stained black. The best way I've found to stain this black is using uh, this India ink that I have on my website uh, with links to it on where to get it. It soaks in really well but still leaves the wood grain and makes it very easy to glue on top of it. The way I usually apply it is I just squirt it on top and use a gloved hand to rub it in. If you like videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, but helps me out a lot. And if you notice, I'm pretty close to 10,000 subscribers, and, and I'd love for you to be one of those that helps me get there. Now that I've got that on there, I'll go ahead and take this glove off, and I want to use a paper towel and lightly wipe it to get the excess off before it starts making it blotchy. All right, now that I've got that on there, I'm gonna let it dry for just a little while and uh, in the meantime, start staining my stripes. Okay, what I'm gonna use on this flag, uh, which if you've watched my other videos, you've seen the colors I've used. This is a scarlet wood stain from Midwax. I'm not sure if they make it anymore, uh, just any type of red that kind of meets your needs. And then I'm using a navy from Midwax wood finish solid color stain. It's called Navy 286. Uh, this is what I'm gonna use on the Union, but I won't do this until after I get it cut down to size. We'll get to that later. Okay, and what I like to use is just a lint-free cloth here, fold it up a couple times and start doing my red. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time showing you this because I've got previous videos that goes over how to do this. Okay, now that we've got all our red stripes stained, we're ready to start assembling. I'm gonna leave my white stripes just plain wood colored um, for that contrast and to go along with the stars. If you haven't seen my stars yet, you've gotta stay tuned till we do the union and check out my peel and stick stars. No glue, no mess, and immediately dry. So first thing I'm gonna do is I left the one and a half inch gap all the way around. My stripes are one and a half inch thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take one of my white stripes, lay it down here on the bottom as my spacer. Then I'll also use one of the other ones on the side to help me lay out where my first stripe will go. Down, I want it to be pretty quick drying and something I can keep working with. I found that tight bond quick and thick works great for this. It dries literally within a couple minutes enough where you can move on to the next piece. Um, it holds like regular wood glue and that quick drying lets you keep working. All right, and I'm just gonna take this, set it in here, wiggle it just a little bit to get the glue to move around. Once I get it in place, I'm just gonna push down and that should have me right where I wanna get started at. Just hold it a couple minutes and it'll dry good enough for me to move on. Okay, I put a clamp on here just to hold it while I start pushing and pulling on it so it doesn't come back up. Like I said, the glue's already kinda of set up enough that it holds it here. We're gonna go ahead with our next stripe. Hey guys, future me here. Just wanna let you know while I'm putting this glue on, I was having problems with this thick and quick glue. I believe it was maybe a little bit too old and gotten a little bit too cold at one point. Once I'd been using a little while, it did clear up and worked fine after that. These first couple stripes though, I was having a problem with the glue setting up like it's supposed to, which is why I've got some clamps on here as you can see. See ya! Okay, now that I've got all these laid down and they're glued down, I'm gonna mark the top of my union where I need to cut it. 
I'll just cut that on the table saw and then finish my 45 degree chamfer across the top. We'll then get the blue applied to it and get it on the flag also. Okay, now I've got that cut down to size, I'm going to use my lint-free cloth and do the same thing here. This you gotta get off fairly quick or it will blotch and almost be like paint on there. All right, we'll let that dry for just a little bit and then we'll go ahead and apply the stars. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put our glue on the back of this and put this union on. I actually chose uh, to do the stars after this dries and we get the finish on. Okay, for finishing, I'm gonna use this Minwax just spray can clear lacquer. I like the lacquer because it dries really quick leaves a great smooth finish. Uh, what I'm gonna do to get, build the coats up a little quicker is use the clear gloss first, uh, but I don't want that shiny look to it. I want more of a dull matte finish to it. So I'm gonna, then gonna use clear semi-gloss over top of that. If it's still too shiny for me, I can put satin over it. But that gloss gives it that good protection and seals the wood. Okay guys, welcome back. Today is the next day. As you've seen in my previous videos, this is how I used to attach my stars and many of you still attach yours using glue uh, with these templates that I sell. An issue that you do come up with this is glue squeeze out if you use too much. You've gotta let the glue dry, which takes time and it takes away from you being able to move forward with your project. What I'm gonna show you today are these new stars that I make and sell that have a self-adhesive backing that when you stick it down, it's immediately stuck, it's immediately ready to go, and it can move forward with no glue squeeze out and no mess. Okay, as you can see, here's the templates that I sell that I use to align my stars so that it's perfectly aligned. And these are the new stars that I sell with the adhesive backing. What I'm gonna do is like always, just take my template, set it up here, align it so that it's perfectly square on the flag. And unlike with the ones that I do gluing down, I'm just gonna set it on here and then I'm gonna put one star in this corner and one star in this corner to get started. And that'll hold it in place. All you have to do is peel the backing off, set it in, press down for a second and it's in there. We'll go ahead and do the top one up here. As you can see here, my templates come with 50 stars that are ready with peel and stick backing that can easily be put down with no glue, no squeeze out, no mess, they immediately dry. There is no downfall to these stars. They stay on there very well, they don't come off very easily at all, and they look great. There's a link in the description if you wanna pick some up. Okay, as you can see here, my stars are all laid out. They're already dry and stuck and all I can do is pull my template off my stars are done. Now I'll put a new coat of lacquer over top of this and my flag is done except for building the frame. All right, I have a couple coats of lacquer on those stars and the flag is finished now. Now I'm gonna get started on the frame, which I'm gonna use solid white oak for. As you can see, this is about seven eighths inch thick, which is a little thicker than what I want, but I just don't feel like planing it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this for my frame. I'm gonna join it with just some simple butt joints and reinforcing screws and filling those with dowels. Okay, what I'm gonna do first is mark the areas where I wanna put the dowels at, which is gonna be in the center of this location. So if I transfer that line out here, I wanna be in between there. I'm gonna get roughly the center, lock that down. Now I can draw a line just right there showing around where the center of that is. And what I'm gonna do is measure. I'm gonna go in 9 16 on each side. Now that I've got my location for my holes, I'm gonna center up my Forstner bit. And for these, I like to go just below how big the bit is there. It gives me plenty of room for a dowel and a screw. I've got two countersunk holes and I'll take my drill and drill a hole through uh, for the screws to go through. Okay, I'm gonna be using these number seven inch and a quarter fine thread pocket hole screws just because it has the nice head on there that will grab a hold and hold this together really well. I'm gonna drill this out with a drill bit just a little bit bigger than this or enough where it can easily, at least easily slide through. 
Okay, now that I've got all these drilled and uh, countersunk, I am going to put just a little bit of glue on this end grain to soak in so that when I put some glue on there, it does adhere a little bit better. Uh, the glue's not gonna give it a lot of strength in this instance with a butt joint, but it'll help hold it together while I put the screws in. Just gonna leave a light coat so it helps fill in those pores and let it dry for just a couple minutes. All right, now that that has dried some, I'm gonna go ahead and do this first joint. What I'm gonna do is just spread a little glue right here on this side, butt it together. And I'm not gonna pre-drill these holes into this piece uh, because these are pocket hole screws, fine uh, thread, so they're meant to work without pilot holes. All right, and just like that, you've got a nice, strong joint. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other corners and we'll see how it looks. All right, we've got the frame all screwed together and glued together, it's nice and sturdy. Thought I had some half inch dowel to use to fill these holes, but I did not. I went to my local box store and they happened to be out also. But they did have these little plugs that I was able to get that'll work just fine. For putting these in, I'm gonna just use regular tight bond uh, original glue for this, just so it dries a little bit slower and I have time to sand it and work with that glue to fill in any gaps. As you can see, that came out really nice and plug those holes. All right, we've got this all screwed together. I've got it completely sanded down. Um, I've even broke the edges slightly to get rid of those sharp edges. Now I'm gonna take some water, spray it down real quick, just lightly to get that grain to rise. And then I'll do another quick sanding and we'll be ready for the finishing process. This is my least favorite part of the job by far is I'm gonna be using this India ink on this oak, which looks amazing in the grain, but it is a messy job trying to get it all covered and then wipe back off before it gets splotchy. So I think I'm gonna to try to work on one board at a time and see how that works out. Okay, we got that all done and for the most part painless, I don't know if that picks up on camera, but I love the way that grain looks with the black ink. All right, just like with the flag, I'm gonna put a couple coats of gloss uh, lacquer on this, and then I'm gonna hit it with one or two coats of the semi-gloss, which will give it a less shiny uh, look to it. All right, now that we've got our flag done and our frame done, it's all nice and dry, we're gonna attach them together. What I did before I started this job was I put pocket holes on the back of this piece of plywood to make it easy to attach to this frame. So what I'm gonna do is flip it over, get it set in there, and rub my pocket screws in. Now, one thing that I found here is due to these stars that stick up a little bit further, than the rest of the flag, it makes it a little lopsided. So what I'm gonna do is just lay a couple of the stars down here to help level it out. Fits perfectly. Now, what I'm looking for is I want about a half inch of reveal on the back here because I'm gonna put a French cleat to hang this by. Now, I'm going to be using this fine thread pocket hole screws because we are going into solid oak, which is a hardwood. Okay, now with all those in, let's go ahead and flip this over and see what it looks like. As you can see, I think that turned out pretty good. Looks really good with that black frame and the black background to it. This is gonna look great in my house. I've got two pieces cut with 45s on them here. And if you don't know the way a French cleat works is you put one piece on your piece that you're hanging with the angle inside and then your piece on the wall with the angle on the inside of towards the wall and then it will simply hang on to it. So what we're gonna do here is just quickly throw a bunch of glue on here and also use some pocket hole screws into this oak frame. So we have a good, secure connection. And as you can see there, we've got a good hanger for our frame. 